Well, I'm pulling off the uh, old Weber. Actually, it's a brand new Weber. It's probably just all gummed up with bad gas, but uh, I don't trust it, to tell you the truth. It's an RGM. It's kind of a rare Weber. It's not a 3236. It's not a 38 Progressive. It's supposed to be better performance than 38 and better mileage than the 3236, but I don't know. But uh, actually, here's your real problem with the Weber most of the time is the adapter plate. And, you know, I had all this stuff on here. It was, I think it leaked a little bit. Not so much between the adapter and the carb, but between the adapter and the manifold. It had a thicker gasket there. Because I noticed when I poured a lot of fuel in here, there was a little bit of fuel right here. And not pouring out, but it was wet. Which indicates to me it was not sealing perfectly. Even though this is all torqued down and all this other crap. But uh, anyway... The Toyota carbs going on here. I'm going to check the manifold for flatness too. And, uh, you know, I'll probably have to get some bolts before I take out, you know, because these studs are too long. They're too damn long for um, what's going in there. Yeah, I want to go over a very important consideration. This is the Toyota carburetor that can go on a six Suzuki Samurai. And one of the problems is you don't have a rubber gasket you can put on there that can really seal between the carburetor and the air cleaner. And that's an issue, especially if you are going to use a snorkel setup and you want to have a tight seal between the carburetor and, um, you know, the, the air cleaner. So, like, if you're setting up a snorkel for going across the water. Now, I got this thing. This is what it's called. I got this off of Amazon. That's the exact number. It's ON-Q Legrand F2242 2.5-inch grommet ring. You can see it's real thick, right? So it works great with the air cleaner. Now, it doesn't quite fit. What I had to do was I took the drill with this attachment on it, and I went around the inside of the grommet until it opened up enough where I can put it over the carburetor. It's stretched over the carburetor. It's on there really tight. And then I can install this, and I could show you exactly how it sits on there, which gives you plenty of clearance for the controls, and it gives you an airtight seal it, in other words, an airtight and watertight seal, especially if you're using a snorkel with this setup and you want to use a Toyota carburetor. So that is that is what I got off of Amazon. I had to modify it. I had to open it up more. And I had to stretch it over the, over the carburetor. I had to open it up where it wasn't, because it was a little bit too, um, you know, small of a diameter because this was actually a very wide gasket. But it could show you how the air cleaner sits on there. It's very very solid okay so I got the Suzuki Samurai air cleaner sitting directly on his Toyota carburetor and you can see that it gives it you know actually you wouldn't even have to dimple the bottom of the carburetor because all the control linkages now have plenty of clearances and it's a total total air and watertight seal so if you want to use a snorkel setup with this damn thing you can you can actually solves you to, that actually solves the issue uh, problem with the air cleaner issue problem where you have to dimple the bottom of the air cleaner and like I said you got to open up that rubber grommet just a little bit with this drill attachment on the inside of the rubber and you know it take, took me about 10 minutes to do that and now you got something sitting up on here where it's watertight for a snorkel and I think a lot of people will be interested in that tip because this Toyota carburetor is actually the best damn carburetor going for Suzuki Samurai as a replacement for hills and everything else like that, gas mileage and low end torque. Well, I took the adapter plate off and, you know, it's... I, I really suspect the problem with that Weber, even because I never really got that Weber to run right in the beginning, was maybe just a bad gas, but it might have been a stupid adapter plate, even though... Thought I had it smooth, but you know, adapter plates are, you know, they are what they are. That's what the problem is. They're made for adapting something that doesn't belong on there. So, like, you have, you know, these studs are pulling up on this one side, and you got these bolts down here. And you don't know if you pull this, just it might, it might be a little warped when you tighten it down. You probably have to tighten it down just right. Now, here's the, uh, Here's the actual, uh, you know, manifold as, you know, the stock manifold. What happens is the bolts on a Suzuki carburetor go through the top and they go down this way. 
to the top of the carburetor and they don't use any studs. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to get some shorter bolts, obviously, right? And um, the other thing is I want to flatten this out with a file. But before I do that is uh, I'm going to take some tape, you know, good old Gorilla Tape, kind of stuff it in a hole here so I don't get any shavings in here. But this is probably pretty flat and clean as it is. But I want to make sure it's as good as possible because, um, you know, that's the whole problem. If you got a slight vacuum leak, stuff don't run right. That's what happens, right? Anyway, so, um, you know, I'm going to say this. If you got a Weber and you're having problems with it, it's more than likely a stupid adapter plate. And what you want to do is take a flat file and go over it, especially even the back of the carburetor and stuff in different directions. Take your file and you go like... You know, I'm not going to do it right now, but if you go over to manifold like this, take off a little bit this way, that way, all different directions, and um, be careful a little bit at a time. And you should get it as flat as need to be without taking it to a machine shop. You should be able to and do the same thing with these adapter plates because that's probably your damn problem. And the other thing is, I recommend using that Permatex um, spray a gasket. It's like a, it's not actually form a gasket per se it's um it's a gasket dressing it's designed for fuel systems it's uh i'll, I'll point out to the part number later when i do this um but i'm going to use that with this because i actually made some gaskets and also you don't want to have a real thick gasket on this damn thing because a thick gasket you know if you actually look at a lot of intake manifolds and stuff like that they use metal gaskets that are really thin that's all you re re really requires and a lot of times um, I like putting that um, Permatex gasket dressing it's not RTV it's uh, designed for resisting fuel and it does work it really really does work um, but it, it provides a much better seal it's not your typical gasket cement it's actually designed to be used with gaskets except the rubber gaskets but just the regular ones but even the metal gaskets good for fuel systems because you don't want any kind of freaking uh, leaks in here with um, what do you call it vacuum <laughs> you know it defeats the whole purpose okay I put some uh, tape on the inside here so it'll catch any well it's not really much of any shavings but I used to file I was going this way that way this way this way that way all different ways and it should be pretty flat it's clean as all hell it should be pretty flat and uh, I'll chemically clean it too and um, this way you know it wasn't really any metal shavings per se very slight amount of dirt but it should have caught it up on this Gorilla Tape and uh, cover it up with a cloth here and we'll go ahead and get some bolts for the uh, Toyota carburetor and go ahead and put it on see how it runs uh, I should have the linkage set up too because uh, I got the stuff from the Weber and you know I actually kind of wonder about how flat this damn Weber is on the bottom too you know now it could be freaking screwed up that's probably the damn problem with this damn thing too actually if you got a problem with a carburetor check on a Weber make sure you check the flatness you can use a file you can use a file but I'm going to show you what that stuff is I use with the gaskets use a thin gasket and use that stuff I'm going to show you. You'll probably be surprised. It probably will work. Well, I got some bolts, and um, the size I got is M. If you can hopefully you can see that good. Yeah, there you go. M8, 125 threads by 30 millimeters long. And they turn out, even though they're metric, they're half inch size heads. 30 millimeters long, 25.4 millimeters is an inch, so it's about eh, just under an inch. And, a quarter just under that but they thread in there and I was checking to make sure they don't thread in there all the way like without the carburetor on but I was just checking to make sure uh, you know these are basically in as far as they go and you don't want to go too far or else you crack the manifold so I was checking to see if they were too long and with the carburetor and the spacer put together it's fine it's fine and um, there's some anti seize on there and you know I was checking it with um, this other plate here which basically <laughs> doesn't even fit under there so which means that um, excuse me is this thing focusing right or what probably not 
Oh, well, there we go. It's uh, focusing now, but uh, I don't know why some of the camera does that shit sometimes. But I was checking it with this plate, and um, the two, the plate. This is the old plant manifold, so basically these bolts would be okay even with this plate without the carburetor. But if you just put the carburetor on without the spacer, which I would not recommend, these bolts would be too long. You'd have to use like I don't know, 25 millimeter or something like that, or 20 millimeter. But these are 30 millimeter M8 125. So, and I always use always use anti seize on everything. So just to make sure, uh, you know, they don't screw up later on. Yeah, another modification you have to do on a stock uh, Suzuki um, Toyota carb to put it on a Suzuki Samurai is you notice this little uh, you know thing here on the end of the cable for the uh, throttle cable. It's a hair bigger. It's only about a 32nd of an inch too big, so you got to go on a carburetor and drill it out just a hair bigger. Um, so I'll show you what the hell that is. It's you know I measured it with this and I checked it with the uh, drill bits. So <laughs> I'll show you. It's it's simple. It's, it's only got to go out about a 32nd of an inch bigger on a carburetor itself. And you notice I got this covered up with tape, so nothing falls in here. This is just a uh, the, the adapter plate laying on there. Okay, so here's the stock Toyota carburetor, and you know that little end that goes on the uh, throttle cable. If it was um, nine thirty seconds, it would fit, right? Well, the Suzuki little end is about five sixteenths. I know it's metric, but it's because it's like a millimeter bigger, so that would be the end of the Suzuki thing. It wouldn't fit, so you got to use this. Only thirty second of an inch has got to come off of here to fit that the cable in there. That's all. Now I made a bracket out of um, a couple pieces of steel. Did a sloppy weld, but it's a very strong weld. I actually built up the weld way more than I should have. But it was with my uh, welder that was broke that I fixed with a 12 volt battery to fix the wire feed motor with the 12 volt battery. But as you can see, this would line up over the holes with the carburetor, and then this goes directly to here. So it's perfect. It's a perfect lineup. Now with this carburetor. Um, I'm gonna have to, I have a right hand drive Suzuki. I'm gonna have to install it with the float ball to the front instead of to the towards the firewall. And it's better to install it to the firewall because if you stall going up a hill, it's better. In other words, the float will be going this way at an angle, right? If you're going up a steep hill, but I don't think I'll have a problem. I'm not doing anything crazy like that. Plus, I also have. Um, the fuel regulator I think I can probably go up at least a 50 degree hill even with the float in the front with the fuel regulator I bet you no problem because uh, I never even heard he you know when he installed them with the float in the back towards the firewall I never heard of them stalling out going downhill either so um, it should be adequate you see I have a right I have a right hand drive so my gas pedal is on the other side so you know it's the only way I can really install it without doing a lot more modifications it's not worth it so I it's like I said it's definitely gonna go up at least 45 degree hills no problem easy so that's plenty good enough yeah I want to point out some other little stupid things because even like I had to drill this hole out a little bit more for the bolt right to fit through it because this hole is just a more narrow right so but you know when you drill it out you make a little bit of a burr on this side I'm just saying like take that burr off because when you torque down the bolt on a carburetor you wonder why it comes loose later and you got a slight vacuum leak it's because it wasn't actually seating against the whole metal all the way it was seating on the burr hey i'm telling you stupid little attention to detail makes crap more reliable hopefully more reliable and you know once you nail it down good you might have to go over it a few times you're good to go and uh Remember, like you're using Suzuki Samurais out in the middle of nowhere, you want to try to at least make them as reliable as possible. Now, in a Toyota carburetor, you got a 28 millimeter hole in both the primary and the secondary, so you got to make sure that you know you're putting the the uh, plate that you modified to open up to 28 on the right side. So here's the when you open it up the throttle, that's the first one to open up. It's the one where the uh, I guess that's the mixture screw or something for the idle and so here we have the gasket goes on excuse me this gasket goes on here like that 
and you also have this channel right this channel right here this goes over that way so it goes from here to that hole which goes to this you know actually if you're not using this you don't need to make that channel if you're not using this vacuum line you don't need to use that channel and the next thing puts on the um, um, what do you call it the other gasket that goes to the manifold and of course this is the one this is the part of the temp the um, spacer that is on the primary that you opened up so it goes over that so now I just want to say what I use on this you don't need to use this but um, don't use RTV don't use there's some other stuff out there actually I think it's called Indian head gasket shellac it's uh, you can use it with gaskets old stuff been around for like 50 years that's another good one but this one um, this is like a red um, gasket uh, dressing and it's very fuel resistant so you know I, I made sure everything was really flat with the file and I'll add this too so and these gaskets are pretty thin so they shouldn't like um, you know leave you some kind of room for leakage if everything's nice and flat but I like using this stuff and uh, also the bracket you know I painted it with um, mag wheel paint now there's only three vacuum there's only three lines you use actually they're not even vacuum lines there's really only one vacuum line you use and on this carburetor um, let me show it to you right now because actually this I think is a vent I don't think this is a vacuum line I don't think that's a vacuum this is a vacuum line right here I'm going to leave this open I'm pretty sure that's not a vacuum line everything is plugged up on this carburetor already I'm probably going to change these little caps to something better, you know, because I don't trust them. They'll rot out after a while. But this is where your um, vacuum advance goes to. And the, also, this line here is where the bottom of your um, vapor canister or charcoal canister, that line goes from, that's where this goes to. This, this line right here on the top of the carburetor, in case you're wondering, of course, and of course this is the fuel line so getting ready to put it in right now so and I went over everything to make sure um, you know all the vacuum lines are plugged up on a manifold it should be okay now on mine on the Suzuki Samurai you could plug this in with the um, the solenoid now in mine I have a different type of solenoid it's a one wire job I don't know if I'm gonna be able to use this damn thing so but on a Suzuki Samurai there's um, you can you you can plug it in by using the two bottom horizontal slots and adapting it to this. You can use this solenoid, but on mine I'm not going to be able to because this isn't really a Samurai. It's a 1985 Jimny 1300. It's a little bit different, slightly different. Well, you can't use studs in here, and uh, I just found this out because the old carburetor used this uh, long bolt going through the top of the carburetor, but it went through the very top. I was just thinking, hey, bolts, you know, but, and, um, you can put a couple bolts in this thing, but then there's a couple more you can't get in there, uh, if you're using, you know, you might be able to get them in there if you only used a few threads, so I'm going to put studs, so in the meantime, I got this basically sitting on here, and, um, it's all lined up, so I'm going to go get some studs, they're probably going to have to be about 40 millimeters long, because, you, you, you can't get the bolts through you can get it through this one and this one but on this side on the opposite side of the carburetor you can't so anyway I'm going to uh, head on down and get some uh, studs or maybe some bolts and I'll have to cut them down you know if I can't find the right stuff but they'll work too so this turned out to be uh, well kind of a pain in the neck <laughs> Turned out, you know, I can't use the bolts. You can use two bolts, and you'd have to definitely use two studs on the other side, or really short bolts that wouldn't grip down into the manifold that good. The original Samurai used bolts, but you can't use it with the Toyota. You got to use the studs. So anyway, um, I got some 50 millimeter long bolts, and um, I cut the heads off. You can see there's the head on a bolt, and here's the. Uh, Basically, what's left of this, I made a stud because I couldn't find any studs. I had to make them. So, uh, you got a tap and die set here. So, I'm using a die. Make sure the threads are cleaned up. And um, this is the original part of the bolt. 
and I used the Dremel to cut the bolt, the, the longer bolt. Basically, it's the same damn thing as this one, except 20 millimeters longer. So, um, make sure the threads are all cleaned up. And, um, you know, I hold the top of it with the hose in there and the vice grips around so I don't screw the threads up. And I'll use the hose to start. I'll show you what I'm doing. So, you walk in a regular, you know, uh, hardware store, you know, the big box the hardware stores, like, you know, what I'm talking about. And I'm really half studs, so I had to make them with bolts. So, the studs are in there. This is the last one I'm installing. I got it with the um, hose over it, so I'm turning it by hand. And I'll use the uh, two nuts, and I'll show you what I'm doing to uh, lock it down. So, I just installed two nuts on top of the stud you know locked against each other so I can just tighten this down and I, I don't tighten it all the way I just you know where it's hits the bottom because if you tighten it down too hard you will crack the manifold you just want to go down to the bottom and actually you should, you should, you should lose um, Loctite on the studs or something like that but I'm not going to because uh, they're not going to come loose actually um, because they'll be in there threaded in there quite a bit and uh, if the Suzuki carburetor goes on there here again, um, I don't want to have a problem getting them out. Actually, if you do use Loctite on the studs, the way to get the Loctite out is you use heat on this, on the stud, and that breaks the Loctite out if you want to do it. But I'm not using it. It shouldn't be necessary because it's in there a whole pile of threads. It's down there, I don't know, about 15 threads or something, so it's not going to come loose. Okay, the carb's on, the um, choke's on. I don't have the fuel line on, I'm going to run it from that, um, what you call it, um, funnel first to make sure everything's okay before I fill up the gas tank. Throttle cable's on here, should be adjusted perfect, the vacuum advance is on, all the, um, the, actually, if you adjust this throttle, it's lined up perfect, right, it's flawless, actually the way it's lined up, the bracket is perfect, but, um, when you step on a gas, it gets about 95% of full throttle at the carburetor, but there's nothing you could do with that. That's just how it is, but it's, it's not really much of a difference at all. But anyway, I'm going to see how this works and start it up. Put a little fuel up there in the funnel and see what happens. Okay, so this is basically installed. Um, the you know I have a hose from this um, funnel going on here. Actually, it's too big of a hose. And this is right here is the uh, actual one for the gas tank. I just put gas in it. Now the air cleaner will sit on here, the stock air cleaner. Also, I want to point out that um, on the top here, um, you can see that I actually put a fender washer with a fender rubber washer and I dimpled down the fender washer. So this is totally sealed and it's got that big thick gasket on the bottom too. So in other words, if you want to set a snorkel up with this, you should be able to. The other thing is from um, this, this hose, all the way down to the exhaust uh, recirculation charcoal canister. There's a, a, whole, uh, a fitting on the bottom. There's a hose that goes to that. Um, the other thing is from the PC, PCV valve right here, which, you know, you don't, you can have it just like like this but it should go to uh, the air cleaner here so I just got to put a hose there and uh, three bolts to hold the air cleaner housing down and there's one other thing because I this is one reason I wanted a stock carburetor you notice this has from the hot air intake so in other words if you're using this in really extreme cold weather you want to actually um, get the hot air uh, the air warmed up from the exhaust so the engine warms up faster and there's got a temperature thing here and um, this actually needs to be hooked up to uh, something I'm not sure exactly where but um, it's probably by the um, uh, where the temperature sensor goes but uh, I did start it up it does run carburetor needs to be adjusted now since I have the float in a um, towards the front the adjustment for the carburetor is over here it's a little bit hard to get at you'd have to actually use a, an angle screwdriver or something but it's no big deal um, but you know it does run pretty fairly smooth just you know without even doing any adjustments but uh, the things in there now and it should run good and uh, 
you know, with the new fuel pump and the gas tank all cleaned out and everything like that, it should be all right. You know, and um, this has a new air filter in it too. So it's a couple more things I got to do, but basically this is the installation for this. Um, it is a pain in the ass because it's like uh, little minor shit. It takes time. It takes time. So, and let me start it up. Interior light works on this damn thing when your door is open, which is nice. So let's see if this thing starts up. Yeah, it runs pretty good. So, you know, you can tell that's the, uh, it's got that Suzuki starter problem once in a while. You got to put um, a relay in there, actually. It's probably not the starter. It's a, uh, you heard the wine like that? That's the, uh, that's a typical problem. It's like you got to put a relay in there. It's like a $10 fix or something. So, probably be doing that. But uh, probably need some adjustment to be running out of gas here, probably. Runs all right. It should it should run okay. Yeah, running out of gas. But anyway, so that should be it, and um, you know, success more or less. Now there's just a fine tuning.